Hello everyone, and welcome to my new yellow desk pad. Today I'm going to be talking about a fascinating thing that I just recently came across, and that is the difference between regular DDR2 like this one and FB DDR2, also known as DDR2 FB DIMMs. So let's get right into it. Now, ECC RAM has been a thing for a very long time, but the way DDR2 does fully buffered ECC is very, very interesting because it's quite different from any other RAM that I'm aware of. Please correct me if I'm wrong, but the, uh, the way DDR2 ECC memory functions is pretty novel. Now, the first thing I should note is this is a DDR2 ECC stick, and this is a non-ECC DDR2 stick. You might think, oh no, I just grabbed the wrong memory sticks, but no, the keying is actually very slightly different. So uh, an ECC DDR2 stick will not fit physically into the slot of a regular DDR2 stick or the other way around. So that means there is a physical incompatibility between systems that use this memory. So there must be something very special about this stick if so-called DDR2 and so-called DDR2 are not compatible. And that very special thing, well, I've disassembled a FB DDR2 stick to show you, and it's, well, it's freaking fascinating. Now this is a dead one from my server. It's one of these exact sticks. Here's part of the sticker. Now this one, if I put it into the server, the server still posts, which is odd, with dead RAM. And it gets to memory initialization, and then it tells me exactly what slot the stick is in, and it says the FBD link to dim number has failed. And it tells me to take the stick out. But if I continue with the boot, it just disables the stick. So that's a clue that there's something very special going on here. But what do you mean something very special? From the back, it's a RAM stick. Okay, I should show you the front then. That is what is so special. That's also why they have this massive heatsink with the extra metal plate here. And on the inside, we can see this big chip has its own thermal pad. Now here's a close-up shot of this die. I looked up the numbers on it, and I found the Intel datasheet for it. And uh, I'm going to read off some of the functions to you in just a second. So this is the Intel 6400-6402 Advanced Memory Buffer, or AMB. Now on the back here, we have two more RAM chips. And uh, I don't know if those are associated with the AMB because it does serve some memory functions. I think that all of the stuff that the AMB needs to do is contained within this package. I don't think those RAM chips directly opposite from it are for the AMB. I think those are just regular RAM chips. Oh, and by the way, those are like the same RAM chips as not this stick, but some other DDR2 sticks I have. So these are uh, DDR2 memory. This is really the only thing that makes them special, and that's also why it's so incompatible with uh, DDR2 regular. That's why they had to make the slots different. Because obviously your regular like home computer is not going to have a clue what to do with this thing, and a server is not going to have a clue what to do without it, because uh, this RAM stick depends on that to function. But anyway, let's get into uh, some of the functions of this. Now this datasheet is prime tech jargon. If you can find this datasheet, you're going to see what I mean. But it's all acronyms. So I'm going to try and decipher what this means, but honestly, I'm sorry. Like half of the stuff, I have no clue what they're even going for. So Intel writes, the DDR interface on the AMB consists of a command decoder. That makes sense. Now this is where things get interesting. A FIFO write buffer to hold the write data before it is written to the DDR channel. 
the right FIFO buffer has 36 entries of 72 bits or 36 by 72. A maximum of 35 entries can be used to store DDR bursts. Write data targeted for other AMB parts on the channel will use three of the 35 entries until the target AMB is known. The right FIFO buffer fills at half of the DDR data rate and empties at the DDR data rate. The right FIFO buffer must support an invalidate right FIFO command or FBD soft reset command. And as far as I understand, the uh, FBD is the server's communication protocol with this chip. Then it says an FIFO read buffer to hold the read data so that each DIM returns data with the same latency as the southernmost DIM in the chain. So that actually explains why LGA771, or at least my LGA771 server that uses these sticks, is so damn picky about RAM compatibility. On that server, you have to install RAM in fours. Like, slots have to be evenly matched on every CPU. And if you install anything out of order, the server gets very, very mad. And that's all because these chips, I assume, communicate with each other through the motherboard chipset, or at least send data to the motherboard chipset that is then read by other FBD or, uh, what is this called, AMB controllers, like, on the system. So, uh, that's really interesting. I can only assume that these communicate with each other. So that's part of the, the ECC function. So, uh, sorry, finishing off that paragraph, the core clock runs at the DDR command clock rate, or half the data rate frequency. The latency through the FIFO read buffer on the southernmost DIM is expected to be zero. So, uh, I'm not exactly sure what that means, to be honest. Of course, it's having to do with memory latency and the AMB syncing. But uh, it's odd that just the southernmost DIM, which I assume would be slot zero, would be zero because... Well, if you've got two CPUs, would it be referring to the southernmost on both? Or would it just be CPU zero slot zero? as uh, slot zero is in many servers. That's, that's odd. I might want to look more into that. Okay, the next point on the datasheet reads, a DDR cluster which serves as a dim buffer by registering outbound commands and data at output flops. The cluster also captures and levelizes incoming read data. So I presume that is another part of the ECC function of this chip because these are ECCs, that's what makes them special. Next point on the datasheet reads, a reset FSM, which puts the DIM in self-refresh when reset is asserted, and exit self-refresh when reset is deasserted and southbound frame training is complete. Now, I'm not quite sure what that means, but considering the use of southbound, I would assume that is the registering of data from multiple of these. Uh, starting from the southernmost DIM, as was mentioned earlier. And self-refresh. I'm also not sure what that means, but that... That implies that this RAM is sentient, basically. So this is a tiny CPU on the RAM, which is just fascinating. Let me look up what FSM means really quickly. Okay, what the hell? <laughs> okay, um, that's not what I was looking for. When I looked up FSM, the first result was, uh, flying spaghetti monster. I'm pretty sure that's not what's going on. Let me look up memory FSM. Finite state machine appears to be what it stands for. Apparently it's a calculation model which can be executed with the help of hardware. Okay, so we're getting into block diagrams here. And uh, 
how the actual electronics of it work, which is truly fascinating. But uh, just to simplify it down, instead of reading you this whole 60-page PDF, it's an algorithm inside the memory. Let's go to the next point on the datasheet. It reads a calibration FSM, which automatically sets the timing for DQS receiver enable and DQS delay, or equivalent DDR timing control mechanism. The DQS receiver enable calibration uses a series of DRAM read and write operations to find the center of the read DQS preamble. During normal operation, the DQS receivers will be enabled at the preamble center to ensure that the DQS signal is received correctly into the AMB component's DDR I.O. circuits. The DQS delay calibration uses a series of reads and writes to, a to align the read DQS waveform rising and falling edges to the center of the DQ data I. And honestly, I think that is the most fascinating part of this uh, data sheet. Now, most of you probably won't understand that, and I forgive you, but that has to do with how these RAM sticks basically talk to each other through the motherboard's controller. And that also has to do with uh, what I was saying earlier about if I put this RAM stick in, the server tells me that it's dead instead of just not posting, and it knows exactly which stick is dead. So the controller on here must still be working because I believe this communicates with the controller on startup to tell you, or to tell the server rather, to then tell the uh, administrator that this RAM is working, this RAM is working, this RAM is working, this one's not, this one's working, this one's working, and etc. So the communication with the host hardware is the, uh, is the craziest part of this whole RAM stick. Now, when I when I got into this, I thought it was like DDR3, where, you know, it's just ECC memory. There's just an extra chip for ECC, and the extra chip on, you know, DDR3 ECC memory, it's just an extra RAM chip. It's not a whole ass controller like this guy. So uh, that's honestly. Fascinating, and that kind of explains the A, increased latency on DDR2 ECC memory, and B, why these are so expensive used, even. Like, 12 gigs of this RAM can run you up about 50 bucks. Which, you know, for a server admin, that really isn't a lot of money, but considering the awful value you're getting there, 12 gigs for 50 bucks, that's, uh, that's really expensive. Okay, next one reads, a configuration register set to allow software to issue DRAM power-up and DRAM MRS slash EMRS commands, as well as a self-refresh entry command. These registers are accessible through the FBD channel commands in the SM bus interface. And then the datasheet says, last point, burst write interrupt is not supported. So let's get back to that configuration register. So, software communicating directly with this controller chip on the memory, that's what that is referring to. Now, uh... Well, yeah, that's actually pretty much it. It's just saying the software is able to communicate, and I assume by software they mean the system BIOS. Because, uh, you know, AutoCAD 2010 is not gonna be talking directly to your RAM. That is the job of the chipset. And then they talk about outputs and uh, command address outputs. I don't think I need to bring up any of those. Okay, I think I've nailed the uh, most interesting parts of this datasheet. Honestly, <laughs> the datasheet is 250 pages, so I've just kind of skimmed through it. If I've missed anything super, super wacky, you know, let me know down in the comments because uh, I would definitely love to bring up 
some more interesting points about this RAM. But for now, that's going to wrap it up for this video. I just wanted to talk about the fascinating concept of the uh, DDR2 server memory. But that's it for this video. Thank you everyone for watching. Hope you enjoyed. Hope to see you next video.